Hey guys, this video is brought to you by .tech Domains. It seems like as programmers, we're always working on some sort of side project, whether it's like a startup, software as a service, or a portfolio site. Picking and finding a domain is actually really, really difficult to do because there's several rules that you should always look at. I mean, the domain should be relevant, it should be short, it should be less than two words, ideally. Also, having the .tech in your domain signifies that you're in technology. So go ahead and join others such as Austin Evans, Consumer Electronics Show, and Viacom when it comes to securing your .tech domain. The link in the description tab below includes a 90% discount. Hey guys, what's up? All right, so in this video, what we're going to be talking about is why you have to use Webpack. And um, it's not just a clickbait title. Literally, like Webpack is used pretty much in every modern web architecture that's out there. It doesn't matter if you're using like React or Angular or Vue or any of that stuff. You're pretty much going to be using Webpack with any sort of professional gig. So the, the quicker you jump on it and start learning how to use it, the better off you'll be. I'm going to highlight a few of the important reasons why you want to use it and some of the things that it provides out of the box for you. Um, essentially, you can think of this as one single tool that is like holding your entire architecture together. And then it creates one single object from literally a, a humongous amount of objects. It can be pretty much infinite. Um, so depending on how big your front end is, whether, you know, how many images you have, how many CSS files, how much processing you need to do, how many loaders you need to have working for you, um, is like Webpack is the glue that holds all that stuff together. So in a weird way, like it gets a lot of credit for things that it doesn't really deserve to have credit for. It was really created with Node.js and it uses Node.js to, to operate. And a lot of the loaders and everything that it's using are third party plugins that are created by other groups of people. And, um, and it's really just gluing all that stuff together for you more efficiently. So Webpack is a great product on its own, but it does get a lot of credit for like um, you know, things that it is really not responsible for. It just, it just kind of glues it together for you. So a lot of people look at the documentation when they start looking at Webpack and because there's so many different, like I said, third party tools and stuff that this thing is working with, the documentation can be daunting and a lot of new developers are like, screw that. I'm not going to touch it, but it's really not that hard to get started with. All you need is to have node installed on your computer. And then you just set up a node project and install Webpack. So with VS Code, after node is installed, I can just go ahead and open up a folder, open up into a, a terminal, run an npm init hyphen hyphen y for yes to everything, and it's going to create a package.json file for you. And then you just have to install Webpack. So it's a dev dependency, so you should do hyphen d and then Webpack. Uh, so a lot, yeah, a lot of you beginners should know that Webpack itself is not something that you actually give to a third-party client that actually then runs it on your UI or something like that. It builds the UI that you then distribute to whatever sort of stack that you're using, whether it's Ruby on Rails or Django, ASP.NET, whatever it is, Webpack's going to create that UI for you. All right, so you can see it installs, it adds it to your developer dependencies. So now we can just add a localized script. And this is about, this is basically how you do virtual environment for all you Python developers in a node environment. So if you want to run something locally for your node modules, you can just reference it here. So I could say Webpack, Webpack just as an example of what I'm running. And then I can use node npm to run that. So npm run Webpack. It's going to need a configuration file. So it's going to ask you to install also the uh, CLI. Just go ahead and say yes to that. So with the Webpack CLI um, installed, we can now feed Webpack arguments from the command line, which is what that's doing. You want to create a Webpack config file, and this is where all the magic happens for the entire project. You can see Visual Studio picks up on it and picks up on the um, Webpack icon there. So here you're just going to do a simple module.exports like using typical Node.js. And you just export an object. The object's going to have a bunch of key value pairs of like really how you're project should be compiled. So most of the time there's like a source folder. We're going to say index.js and then like uh, we need to put an output. So there's going to be a JavaScript object. A key value pairs file name is going to be, um, we'll just say JS and then we can say the name of the module dot bundle dot JS. And then we're going to have the path here. This is where we probably need to go ahead and import a node module. Again, this is all really just node behind the, the scenes here. Uh, we're going to create a constant path and then require the module. 
And there's a built-in path module that it comes with Node.js that allows you to like read the file system and stuff like that. Uh, but we can go ahead and call a built-in function path.resolve, pass in the shorthand uh, dir name to get the uh, current directory that we're in. And that gets the full directory, not just relative. And then we just say dist is going to be the name of the output. So we want all of our stuff being outputted to a distribution folder. And again, that's where all the magic happens. There's going to be a ton of stuff that goes on. But ultimately, Webpack's going to run a bunch of processes for you. And it's going to output one distribution folder. And then you take that folder. And like I said, that goes to Ruby on Rails or Django with Python or whatever backend stack you want to use. Hell, it could even go on to just an Apache web server uh, under your htdocs. All right, guys, there's a few more commands we should just add on to this. We should add a watch equals true. That way we don't have to continue to like recompile the build. Webpack will watch all the files in the project, and every time you make a save to one of them uh, or really make a change to it, it's going to go ahead and fire everything for you. And then we also just want to say when Webpack is importing files, and that's something that I want to show you. It's one of the biggest benefits uh, of this as well, that it's going to resolve .js files for right now. It can do uh, TypeScript files, SAS files, all kinds of different files. All right, guys, so we also have a bug on the module.export here. This should be module.exports. Otherwise, the Webpack file will never be picked up on. Let's create our source folder, which is going to be the root source uh, of our application. And then the starting point is going to be the index.js file. So every application, your user interface is really just one starting point, and then from there, everything is being imported into it. And right now, we're just going to create something that's just very basic, but I'll say my variable equals, this is a string, and um, we're just going to alert that out, right? So my variable, it alerts out. And now, when we go to run Webpack, um, just go to your, your command here, and then we say npm run Webpack. And I want to show you what this is going to do. And by default, if you're using Webpack 4, this is going to create a lot of benefit for you here. So the main.bundle file, if we look over at what is being um, returned here, it's actually minified for you automatically. So all the white space is taken out. It's also uglified in the sense that it's, um, it's more efficient. So you can see that we declared the my variable constant. And by default, it just went ahead and took it out because it realized that um, hey, it's much more efficient to just reference this string value versus having to create a variable uh, to declare a string uh, value for it and then reference that variable. None of that needed to happen. You can just reference this string variable right into the alert statement. Uh, but you'll see that it does a lot more complex compilation for you out of the box. It also does something called uh, tree shaking. So if we like, we're trying to import modules, you can import stuff. Uh, these days very easily. So like, let's just say there's like um, an add file. So add is, uh, we're just going to create a uh, function here that is uh, going to return. Uh, really, I don't even need that. I can just say x plus y. Pass in x and y here. And then we just return that. And then you can go ahead and export this as a function. So as um, if you're dealing with a lot of different files and stuff, you could have like your buddy Bob working on add.js. You're working on index. Eventually, um, you know, you're ready to bring that in. So you just go ahead and import that. And we could say import add from the add. And I don't even have to specify the file extension. That's why we referenced that. Um, we specified that in the webpack config so it automatically picked up on it. I don't have to say .js or anything. Um, and now I can go ahead and just uh, use that. So we don't have like anything to show our JavaScript file in action like in a browser, but I could go ahead and just call five and five. And you can see as I'm, um, every time I make changes here, this is um, bundling up and, and putting it all out there. So you can see we now have this these um, these functions available to us. So if I wanna see all that, really I can go ahead and just create like a uh, index .html file, type HTML, click on this, um, go down here, and then we can go ahead and load our bundle file. So let's reference that. Uh, it's going to be source and equals the uh, dist, and then the JS and the main.bundle. All right, so now we should at least get that alert statement. If we go ahead and view that, I can right click and view. In my file explorer, double click on it to open it up in Chrome. And then uh, we got, what, we, what do we got? We got file not found. 
And the reason why is we got this forward slash here, so let's get rid of that. All right, go back up in here, and uh, we get this is a string that's alerted out, and then we get 10. So you get that module importing for you. And um, obviously, that's just one simple module that is an add function, but you could have something way more complex that you're importing all over the place. Webpack's going to automatically look at the order in which all that stuff is imported, and then doing tree shaking, making sure that you're not importing the same thing over and over again. So it does way more too. This is a tutorial series that I was putting together. And in this one project, this is able to convert SAS code to regular CSS. It can also just simply load CSS inside of like TypeScript files, inside of JavaScript files. It can compile TypeScript. It can also compile some of the latest and uh, JavaScript as well. So I, I configured this to use the latest uh, Babel version. So like you can write literally ES20 code that is not running in any sort of browsers right now but just through webpack and configuring all these separate tools together like you could see these all these dependencies are what make this magic work but webpack is the glue that holds it all together and you just configure it it takes some skill to do but once you're able to do that literally you become like sort of a ui ninja because it's really a mandatory thing if you're going to be able to take um you know and really handle a ui project and a production level company like a major company um, hell even smaller companies these days like you're gonna have to understand how all this stuff works all right so if you guys are looking for a more in-depth explanation i do have a tutorial series available i recommend you go to my website codehawk.com there's an all-access bundle it's just one price for everything so you get all of my courses um, there's more than like 10 probably like 15 hours of content all of it created this year all of it brand new for instance, this is a, one of those courses, uh, Modern Architecture with Webpack, and it goes through step-by-step -step pretty much everything I showed you on how to configure all that stuff together. It also does things like um, that I didn't cover, like ES linting, also unit testing, um, and other things as well, like image conversions. This, it goes on and on what you can use Webpack for. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment. I appreciate all that stuff. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Thanks.